Hey, what's up? It's MarketAlchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Happy 2022, everybody. And let's talk about upgrading to Phoenix 1.6, specifically the front end of it. Uh, I had already upgraded Alchemist Camp to Phoenix 1.6, but at the time I did so, I left everything using Webpack, which is what it had used previously. For those who aren't familiar, Phoenix used to use Brunch.js or Brunch.io for its uh, static asset compilation, and then it moved to Webpack in Phoenix 1.4, and now in Phoenix 1.6, it's moved to ES Build. I think all in all, this is great because it's faster and honestly, out of all the dependency hassles I've had with Elixir apps over the years, I would say maybe 60% of them have been on the JavaScript side, even though 90% of the code is Elixir. And the reason for a lot of those has just been um, various Webpack loaders have extremely particular dependencies where if, you have, if you're off by a minor version um, or there's something, there's always a lot of churn in, uh, in the libraries. That's the main thing. And so you'll have a lot of cases where you can spend hours trying to figure out how to get something to work when, you know, it's not, it's not really something that will help either your app or your own skills going forward. It's just minutia about various libraries that churned. So hopefully ES build fixes that even if it doesn't, uh, which it may not be able to, even if it doesn't, it's still a whole lot faster. And uh, I think long-term it should be simpler because it's just using ES6 modules and uh, browsers pretty much all support them these days. So um, the hassle that I had with my upgrade is that I have some really uh, specific requirements for Alchemist Camp. A lot of those are because this is a long running Elixir app. In the past, every time you started a new Phoenix app, uh, it would generate a bootstrap set of themes for you because it just used bootstrap like uh, most other frameworks did. And uh, most recently, SCSS was also the default in Phoenix, which is convenient, but now more people are using Tailwind and Tailwind can work with SCSS, but uh, it's not that common for people to use SCSS with post CSS. And looking at the combination of things that I wanted for my app, it was I wanted to use ES build because that's what everyone's using with Phoenix now and it's much faster. I want to use Tailwind because that's what I'm most productive with. I want SCSS because uh, this is already a fairly large app with many, many modules and lots of SCSS written already. And I also have Font Awesome as a dependency, which was using SCSS. And I have uh, a lot of CSS that I've written that uses SCSS variables. So just a lot of work to get rid of that. So I saw this post on Elixir forum it says boilerplate needed Phoenix 1.6 plus ES build plus tailwind plus SCSS plus Alpine. I thought, all right, this is great. This is exactly what I need, except, uh, I don't need Alpine. I do need font awesome, but you know, lots of people are probably using font awesome, right? Um, turns out this uh, fairly long thread didn't have any any answers to the actual question. They were mostly saying, oh, here's this other thing you can do that doesn't include these things. Um, personally, I don't, I don't need Alpine because uh, uh, it doesn't support the secure content policy that I want to use for my apps, so I, I just haven't been, been using it. If I had to use something like it, I would probably actually just use Vue.js. But uh, I do want SCSS and I do want Tailwind. So turns out this is, this is a bit of a hassle. I, I, uh, I found uh, various solutions that met like four out of the five things I wanted, just nothing that met them all. Went on a pretty long uh, detour, just looking at everything I could find online and also spending a lot of time just banging my head against uh, different configurations. And finally, I found uh, a couple of blog posts that got me really close. They're both written by Polish guys named Carol, ironically, or 
coincidentally, I guess. And um, one of them writes its own, it includes like a custom ES build script in order to set up the assets. And the other one uses uh, something called uh, Vite or Vite. I'm not sure how it's pronounced. Oh, French, so Vite probably. Uh, Vite.js. And this is a tool that's built on top of ES Build. So you still use ES6 modules. You still get all the benefits of fast compilation. And amazingly, it has support for SCSS right out of the box. You don't have to do anything for it. It just, um, you, you can support it with, uh, with Vite.js. So that was interesting to me. I checked out his blog post. He's, uh, he's using React, which I'm not, but the basic steps are all the same. And I'm gonna include this and the Elixir forum thread in the comments for this, or in the uh, description of this video. But basically, uh, you can follow the same steps, just uh, instead of making a React TS assets template, you can just uh, make a vanilla JavaScript one. It will generate uh, most of the stuff that you need on the front end. You still have to make a few changes in your Phoenix app. Uh, I don't need Bulma, but SAS, yeah, it was literally just a matter of installing SAS and then I uh, don't really have to do anything for that in the uh, Vite.js config. And everything works pretty simply. There were a couple of other things I encountered on uh, the Font Awesome side, but let's just go through it really quickly and I'll show you what I've got. So um, this is an old branch of my repository. Uh, Webpack is gone, so I can just get rid of this entire thing. My mix file barely changed. Basically, I just had to uh, remove esbuild because Vite adds it for you. And I also had to change my setup. Previously, I had a script called deploy that was calling Webpack, and then a watch that called Webpack. And then in my, my uh, um, CICD, I ran um, number of, of bash commands that you normally would and then ended up calling this yarn deploy. So same thing with Vite, basically. Um, it just Vite build will uh, do the deploy. Uh, I just added this alias here just so I can use the same name I had been in all my other scripts. And my dependencies also got quite a bit lighter. So previously you can see I had all of these things most or many of which were related to Webpack. But now all I've got is, let's see, Axios. So this is just my own stuff. I'm using a highlighter. I've still got Bootstrap, um, or I did at that time. I've, I've removed it now. Font Awesome. But uh, basically, we've got ES Build, ES Build SAS, and then Post CSS, which is a prereq for Tailwind. Uh, I wanted a couple of post-CSS plugins, one for handling nested styles and one for preset environments, one for URL, then SAS, Tailwind, and Vite itself. A lot of this was auto-generated, so you can just run the Vite.js generator and then uh, see what the diff is. I will also put a copy of this file in uh, the show notes. And then my app.js it's basically the same thing as what I had before, except instead of using Prism, I'm now using Highlight.js for my code highlighting. Reason for that is I was having a hard time getting Prism.js to work with ES Build. It doesn't use uh, ES modules, so it, it's using um, one of the older module uh, syntaxes. So that was uh, breaking everything, and I just found it easier to move to highlighter. I'm sure Prism will support it at some point, but at this point it, it still doesn't. Then in dev.exs, uh, instead of using Webpack in your watcher, you can just use vite.js. I'm just calling it directly out of the node module. So just node module slash vite slash bin slash vite.js, and that will directly call it. And uh, haven't had any problems with the watcher 
so far. It's been uh, pretty smooth on that front. My Vite.js config is a bit different than Carol's was. Let me see here. Okay, so here's his config. And this is very close to what was generated for React. Uh, I'm not using React, so that's, uh, that's uh, one difference. Then the other is, so we've both got uh, something to make sure that we're, we're not having zombie processes uh, when we're running in dev. That's pretty straightforward. Right, so if you look at this input, this is a default that comes in the generated template. It's gonna create a main.js and a main.css. Phoenix's default is to call it app. JS and app CSS. So you actually rename the key on this input in order to change the name of the outputted file. And that file is going to be in JS slash app JS. And you want the files to be output to assets slash app JS and assets slash uh, app.css. And then there are other assets too. So I, I, I made this separate function here, this, uh, this chunk assets here. So chunk assets will look through um, these asset mappings that I defined. Um, these correspond to web fonts. You know, they'll get put under fonts slash whatever the name and dot whatever extension. And then for CSS, we'll put that under assets slash name and extension. Same thing with SCSS. So to show you what that looks like in way down here in priv static, we've got a fonts directory that has all of these endings that I'm matching for in here. And then we have an assets directory that has both apps, uh, app CSS and app JS. So that's, uh, that's what we should be seeing there. Then let's see, app.js, that is the one I just clicked on. Highlight JS, okay, that's basically unrelated. However, if you run into problems with Prism JS and you are doing code highlighting in your app, try Highlighter JS, you may find it fixes stuff. And then custom SCSS, you can see here I have Tailwind and I'm, you know, I've got some nested styles and I have all kinds of, you know, Variables here for colors. Now I know it's better to put those in the Tailwind theme. And in fact, that is in, in progress, but we've got some other uh, some other variables like the, uh, the font awesome path and stuff like that, the icon path that it's just nice to have. So, um, so far everything works and it's pretty fast. Anyway, this was my solution if you find this useful, then please go to either the YouTube video or this episode once I put it up on episodes and uh, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. If, uh, if it wasn't useful, you have a better way to do it. I'm interested in hearing that as well because I spent uh, an embarrassing amount of time actually going through different permutations of things I could do on the front end build. See you next time.